to bring the lost to Jesus for membership in his family, to develop them into Christ-like maturity, to equip them for Christ's ministry on earth, to improve their quality of life, to be a ministry to the total man. Today's message, because it is a Palm Sunday, is a unique message. It is simply titled, Jesus is out of the closet. We usually use that phrase when we're speaking of individuals who've had a secret life, and in that secret life, they've all of a sudden reveal it, make it manifest. Well, today's message is about Jesus who enters Jerusalem as the king of the Jews. And he's out of the closet for you. And whatever you need, he's got. He was hidden under the law. He was hidden in the Old Testament. But he is now revealed to us. So let's talk more detail about Jesus is out of the closet want to invite you to two passages of scripture, Old Testament and New. Psalms 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Notice, he says, he that dwells in the secret place. When a thing is a secret, it's hidden. It's not revealed to you. But let's go to the New Testament. Chapter 12, verse 12 of St. John. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, bless is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. I want to talk from this subject based on these texts. Jesus comes out of the closet. Talk to me, say, Jesus has come out of the closet. We use this expression to describe people who live a lifestyle that they have kept secret. Because they don't want their friends, their family, their community, and loved ones to know about their secret lifestyle. But for some reason, they can't keep it hid. Something in them burns them to come out of the closet, to let the public know about their private life. I really don't understand why it's so important that folks have to let the world know about their private life. Now that one I just don't understand. You know, like it don't benefit me none to know about your secret life. But we had a gentleman in California that I remember him as being a great decathlon runner and uh, changed his name to Jalen. But he, Caitlin, is that it, Caitlin? Oh, y'all know all about it. 
name was Bruce. But he changed it. And publicly came out of the closet. To let the world know that he's a new man. <laughs> He'd been born again. I began to look at the life of Jesus and how that God's plan to bring Jesus out of the clouds. Now when we take a look at the text. Psalms 91 tells us he that dwelleth in the secret place. Notice the psalmist knew nothing about Jesus. He had heard that there would be a king. He heard that there would be a Messiah, that there would be a man that would come to deliver them out of oppression. It goes all the way back to when God spoke to Abraham in the 15th chapter of Genesis and tells him about the history or the future of his children. In that 15th chapter, he says, your children are going to be held in captivity down in Egypt. And uh, they're going to be held there for 400 years. He said, but they're going to be punished down there because they have taken on the spirit of the sun god. And so God is going to punish them for 400 years. God then spoke to Abraham and told him, but I am going to bring them out. Let's take a look at God's plan. When God created man, God created man in his image and in his own likeness. Man had the virtues of God. Man knew no sin. It was called the dispensation of innocence. Innocence because they knew no sin. They were physically naked and uh, really had no shame or inhibitions about their nakedness. Adam and Eve didn't need the Holy Ghost in them. Are y'all with me? Was no need for the Holy Ghost. He, he became a living soul. And it wasn't necessary that the soul have the Holy Ghost in it. Not at that time because God physically communicated with man. He had a personal contact with him. But there was an angelic being who said in his heart, I want to be like God. And that was Lucifer. And Lucifer was an angel. And that angel had got kicked out of heaven. So he pays a visitation to man in the garden. There he visits and meets the woman all by herself. Yes. There he begins to lay out for her a temptation that deceived her and she then goes to her husband. And her husband was not deceived but just obeyed his wife and this brought about what we call sin. And when sin appeared and they disobeyed God and ate from the forbidden fruit, don't know whether it was an apple, don't know whether it was an orange, all it was was a fruit that God said you don't eat. And when that happened, that caused a separation in the garden. And when that separation came, that meant man was separated from God. Man then goes on to have children. He had two boys, Cain and Abel. And 
thus when man was kicked out of the garden God had to change his dealings with man and when he changed his dealings he had to change it because man had changed man now had a conscience and he knew the difference between right and wrong can I talk to you so thus, because he knew the difference between right and wrong, God dealt with him in a different way. But it is during this age, which is called the dispensation of the conscience, that we get the first murder. That Cain kills his brother Abel because he was jealous. He was jealous of the sacrifice that he had made to God. And that God didn't answer or respond to the way he wanted to serve God. That, that's a message with Cain and Abel because you just can't serve God any way you want to serve him. And you just can't present anything to God the way you want it presented. And so it was that Abel was a little upset. Because he didn't want to give God what God wanted, which was a blood sacrifice. Can I talk to you? So thus he hated his brother and you get the first murder. It was then that God, during the age of the conscience, that when you move to the sixth chapter of the book of Genesis, you will find where the Bible tells us that the sons of God, the sons of God was those one third of the angels that had got kicked out of heaven with Lucifer. The sons of God, demons who lived in the air, took on the form of physical bodies and they impregnated the daughters of men. And the Bible said that they had children by them. And when they had those children, those children were children of renown. They were children that could do unusual things. It's something about demonism that will empower people. Demonism allows a soothsayer. To be able to look into a crystal ball and give you a fortune telling. Are y'all with me? So those sons of God, they had evil spirits and their children became so evil until God repented that he made man. And when he repented that he made man, God then pledged in his heart, I'm going to wipe out all of mankind. But then God seen one man by the name of Noah. He sent for Noah and he told Noah, I want you to do something because I want to use you to preserve life. I want to use you to preserve uh, life of animals, life of birds, life of crawling creatures. So I want you to build an ark. Are y'all with me? It was then that Noah built an ark. And Noah was on that ark a long time. This still is uh, the dispensation uh, of the conscience. He turned around and gave Noah dominion and authority. Help me say dominion, dominion. and authority over the earth. Commanded him to replenish it. Gave man Authority over the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air. But Noah got drunk and his youngest son abused him. And the Bible said when he woke up and found out what Ham had done to him, he cursed Ham. And it was after this that God turns around and changes dispensation. He calls out a man again by the name of Abram. Abram was a man that God used and gave him a promise and ushered in a new dispensation.
A dispensation, church, is a period of time or a number of years when God deals in a particular way with his people. Are y'all still with me? It was Abram that God gave a promise. And you'll notice everything that he told Abram is physical. Things that you can see. Things that you can touch. He tells him, I'm going to bless your seed. I'm going to bless you. And you will be a blessing. It is during the age of the promise that God raises up a man by the name of Moses. Moses then was raised up to bring Israel out of bondage. And then because, let me back up to the age of the promise. The age of the promise was a time when God introduced faith, but he didn't introduce his mind. Otherwise, there wasn't a standard for righteousness. All there was was a standard for man to trust and believe in God. Taught man how he ought to trust God. and How God is able to make a way out of no way. But yet missing in the promise was the mind of God. Or the will of God. Are y'all with me? How God wanted man to live. It is found in Romans chapter 7 and verse 7. Paul says, I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. So God takes Moses up into Mount Sinai, gives him the law. And when he gets the law, the law that is read by the scribes is carried out by the Pharisees. But the problem was it brought condemnation on the people because the people knew the mind of God, but something was missing on the inside. There was something missing on the inside that did not empower the people to live up to the mind of God. But all of this time they were hearing prophecies. They were hearing rumors. Can I talk to you? They were hearing rumors of a Messiah. They were hearing rumors of a man that was going to come to deliver them out of sin. All the way back when Israel was held in bondage, Pharaoh heard about the Messiah. And so Pharaoh passed a law to have all the boy babies that are six months and down to have them killed. So they wiped out the males in order to stop the rumor. But I'm here to tell you when God makes a promise, the devil can hinder, but the devil can't stop. Lord, help me here. Well, tell you something today. When God makes you a promise, when God puts something in your heart, the devil might hinder you. The devil might slow you down, but you can't die. Until the promise of God is fulfilled in your life. I can speak from personal experience. I know the devil has tried to kill me twice. One time with my head bleeding in the brain. But God has made me a promise. And I can't die. Until that promise is fulfilled in my life. That's why I ain't going to let you and I ain't going to let no other demon stop me from living for God. Because God promises are true. Will y'all help me preach? Tell your neighbor, say God's promises are true in your life. All you got to do is keep your commitment. Come on, talk back to me. Say, I got to keep my commitment. Yes, sir. So then because the, the law was a letter of condemnation, man couldn't live up to it. So God had to bring Jesus out. Of the closet. Romans 8 and 3 says for what the law 
could not do. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin to condemn sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law could be fulfilled in us. God had to bring him out because every man that he sent had failed. He had sent brother Elijah and brother Elijah let a woman scare him to death. Scared him so bad that he went up under a juniper tree and said, Lord, take my life. Sent David, who was a great warrior, symbolic of God. Jesus, because he was a man after God's own heart, but David couldn't do it. Even though he was a great warrior from a boy all the way into manhood, he had blood on his hands. So God said, no, I can't even let you build me a house. He turned around and had Jesus' first cousin. His name was John the Baptizer. Can I preach to you? John the Baptizer came baptizing and preaching about Jesus. But John couldn't be the one, even though John was born with the Holy Ghost from his birth. John couldn't be the one because when John got thrown in prison, John seen he was going to get his head cut off. So John got so nervous until he sent word find Jesus. Ask him, are you the one? Or should we be looking for another? Otherwise, his faith got weak and without faith it's impossible to please God so God who had Jesus hidden away where'd you hide him he was hidden in the bosom of the father St. John chapter 1 and verse 18 tells us that Jesus was in the bosom of the father so God had to empty out himself and send Jesus into the world to redeem us from sin. Are y'all with me? As he did, God turned around and had him born of a virgin. And the Bible tells us he came and he lived a normal life. He lived a normal life. He, he had come out, but he was still in hiding. He was a just a carpenter's son until he was about 12 years old. At age 12, he goes up for his bar bitsma. When he goes to his bar bitsma, he's in the temple. And he's talking to the scribes. And he's talking to the Pharisees. And they're shocked. Because he knows so much about the Old Testament. But God was preparing him but still had him in hiding. God waited until he was about 30 years old. And at age 30, God sends him down to the Jordan where John was baptizing. John was baptizing and even though John had never met Jesus, God had to show John who Jesus was. In St. John chapter 1 and verse 33, John makes this confession. John says, I never knew him. I didn't know what he looked like. I had never met him. But the one that sent me to baptize told me when I see him, I will see the Holy Ghost descend from heaven. And when the Holy Ghost descends, you'll see the Holy Ghost light on him. But the Holy Ghost will remain on him when Jesus comes straight way up out of the water that the heavens opened up are y'all still with me and the Holy Ghost came down but this time it came down in the form of a dove and when it came down in the form of a dove it lit 
on him and it remained. The message to us is uh, that when the Holy Ghost comes uh, on your life, uh, it's supposed uh, to remain with you. You ought not just come and get enough for Sunday or get enough to hold you for all day Sunday. You got to get enough to take you Sunday through Sunday. You got to have enough to keep you all day long because you can't make it by yourself. But still God did not bring him out of the closet. God then sent him out into the wilderness. He goes out into the wilderness now in the fourth chapter of Matthew. He goes out in to the wilderness and there he's out there for a period of 40 days. I pray that the message touched you, that it went home to your heart, that it will let you know that the benefits, the truths, the promises that's recorded in the sacred scripture are alive and well for you. All you have to do is believe it. It's according to your faith. This is the words of Jesus. It's according to your faith, so be it unto you. He's out of the closet. You can reach him. He's there. All you have to do is go to him personally on your own, and he will be personal with you. To meet whatever challenges your life, Andre Crouch penned the song that I want to just share the words says Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there is no other for Jesus. He is the way and he is the answer for your challenges. I want to take this time to thank you so much for your, your cards, for your love tokens, and for your gifts. Our prayer partners are there on the phone. They're waiting to hear from you now. We want to know that God is hearing our prayer for you because we're praying for you. And whatever that need is, I want to remind you of the words of Peter, casting your cares upon him because he cares. Just phone us right there at the number that you see on the screen. And we certainly are here for you. Thank you. May God bless you. And I'm looking to see you again this same time next week.